الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على محمد رسول الله سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين والشافع المشفع يوم الدين وعلى آله الطيبين وأزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وصحابته الغر الميامين وبالأخص منهم خلفائه الأربعة الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وسائر أصحاب نبينا أجمعين ومن اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد حياكم الله Dear brothers and sisters to this talk today which is about a very important topic which is being neglected and ignored by most of the people today and it is part of the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam which in it Jibreel asked the Prophet sallallahu about the time that the hour is going to exist and at the beginning of this hadith there was some direction and guidance to what brother Shafiq was uh, telling the brothers sitting aside to the wall as when Jibreel alayhi salam came in form of man and sat to the Prophet sallam, knees to knees and he placed his hands on his thighs and started asking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam the questions at the end of the uh, hadith the Prophet sallam, said to the Sahaba it was Jibreel alayhi salam came teaching you your knowledge or your deen teaching you your deen the ulama said that he Jibreel came to teach us from A to Z the deen first how to come to the settings of seeking knowledge how you look like tidy clean and good and clean clothes look nice smell nice and come closer to the speaker sit close to him that is the manner of seeking knowledge And at the end of the hadith, there came the issue, or the, the, the Jibreel asked about the issue of our topic today, which is the hour. And as I uh, <coughs> prepared here, as to begin with today in our topic, I said, all, pra all praise due to Allah, the one who made this world, the dunya, is a world of ibtila, of testing, of trials. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah without any partners who assigned a determined end for each soul and he Allah Ta'ala informed us as in Surah Taha that the hour is coming no doubt but it is hidden Allah Ta'ala made it to be hidden so that every soul would be judged based on what it earned in this world and that Allah Ta'ala will resurrect 
those who are buried in their graves and this does not necessarily mean those who are buried in the ground but those who died will be resurrected whether they were buried or burnt or drawn in the sea or eaten by wild animals they are all going to be resurrected on that moment when Allah Ta'ala permits the hour to exist which is not a doubt it is a certain matter it is going to exist and no doubt and I bear witness that Muhammad is the slave and messenger of Allah who been sent by Allah by the truthfulness and guidance and light so that the truthfulness would be distinguished and known from the blindness and misguidance and he Allah Ta'ala sent down the book to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that book which contains of the news of all those before us and the news of all what is going to happen from his time until the hereafter Allah Ta'ala made that book a describe made in it a describe to what is going to happen on that day the day of resurrection the day of judgment and Allah Ta'ala described some of those real crises which are going to exist on that day and from that is what Allah Ta'ala said at the beginning of Surah Al-Hajj Ya ayyuhan nas ittaqu rabbakum inna zalzalat al-sa'ati shay'un azim yawma tarawnaha تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارا وما هم بسكارا ولكن عذاب الله شديد O oh you people O oh you mankind fear you Lord سبحان الله this world this world تقوى as mentioned in the Quran in 173 places 173 places in the Quran this thing was mentioned taqwa taqwa is the thing that Allah Ta'ala created all these universes for to be implemented taqwa is the thing that leads to the paradise taqwa is the thing that provides you a very good and comfortable life in this world taqwa is the thing that make calamities easy for everyone taqwa is the thing that can make you a man of justice a man of justice and you will never ever oppress any creature because the taqwa will stop you from doing that and taqwa and taqwa was identified and explained by one of those experts of taqwa who are very rare in this world it was Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu who explained taqwa by four things he said it is fearing Allah the Almighty fearing Allah the Almighty fearing him how fearing him when you want to speak is what you are going to say something pleases Allah or displeases Allah and you need to measure out what pleases Allah and what doesn't of course you all know 
Backbiting doesn't. Cylindering doesn't. Lying doesn't. Deceiving doesn't. Mocking doesn't. And these five are most of our speech today. Most of our speech today is these five. These five things. And we consider ourselves people who fear Allah. Fearing Allah in what you say. And what you don't say, when you don't say something, you need to fear Allah. Why don't you say it? Is it because keeping silent pleases Allah? Because the Prophet ﷺ told us, قُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ أَوْ اسْمُتْ Say good or keep quiet. You have to say the good. And you have to keep quiet when you don't find it good. And when you, you feel Allah in your actions, and what you do, in your income, at your work, in your house, with your family, with your neighbors, with your parents, with your relatives, with everyone and everything, fearing Allah. So the first of what Ali radiallahu anhu explained taqwa is this thing, fearing Allah. The second, وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْتَنْزِيلِ Acting upon the revelation. Ask yourself, when you pray, is your prayer based on the revelation or based on imitation? Big difference. Even when you imitate those who are good, still big difference. Still big difference. Because you only imitate, but you don't, you don't do it you are not doing it based on what you learned. It is not enough for you to imitate those people of goodness, people of knowledge. But you need to learn from them. As Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala said, لا تقلدني ولا تقلد الشافعي ولا الثوري ولا الأوزاعي ولكن خذ من حيث أخذنا do not imitate me. Ahmad ibn Hanbal is saying that. Do not imitate me. Nor Shafi'i, nor Thawri, nor Awza'i, but take from where we talk. Meaning learn. Learn. The person who fits himself to imitating, he will end up in loss. Because today, you see someone you trust, and he is maybe a person of knowledge. But tomorrow, you may lose this man. You may be in a place where he is not there. Maybe he dies. And then you see someone who may convince you. And then you just imitate. Just imitate. And that man might be a man of bid'ah. So you have to base your worship on the, on the revelation, not imitations. On the revelation, not imitation. And you won't know the revelation unless you be somebody who seeks knowledge. Seeking knowledge is not only to attend a lecture or an emotional talk that motivates you to act, but at the end you don't know what to do. But to come to the circles of knowledge where the knowledge is being taught and learn seriously and go back and act upon what you learned that is following the revelation as Allah Ta'ala said He Allah taught man what he never knew and the third of what Ali radiallahu anhu explained uh, taqwa with is al-qana'atu bil qaleel to find sufficiency in whatsoever little income that Allah Ta'ala gives you little sustenance that Allah gives you like what Allah Ta'ala advised the best man Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the best worshiper Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as in Surah Al-Kahf Ayah 28 
وين الله تعالى سيد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا واصبر نفسك او محمد be patient while sitting to those who only worship their lord in the morning and in the evening and do not and they and they do that seeking the face of your lord and do not turn your face away from them seeking the worldly life and do not obey that man who we turned his heart away from guidance and he became a man of heedless and his mother was a loss so do not make your Do not make your uh, aim and worry is the better life in this worldly life. Comfortable life. And that's how Rasulullah lived. He did not have a comfortable life like us today. Not because he could not have it. Allah Ta'ala said to him in the Quran, تبارك الذي لو شاء لجعل لك خيرا من ذلك جنات ويجعل لك قصورا glory be he the one, of, the one whom if he would he would have gave you better than that gardens and he would have given you palaces meaning in this world life but this is not the thing this is not the thing and that's why you need to see the people who you find yani, who are on the way of Rasulullah and stick yourself to. And the fourth is as he radiallahu ta'ala anhu said wal isti'dad liyawm al-rahil getting ready for the day of leaving for the day of departure getting ready for that day if one of you have ever traveled on a plane, you know that the time is determined. And you know that the way is limited, isn't it? You can't take everything with you on the plane. Because they will give you a limited way. So you will only take what weighs less, but is more worthy that's what you need to do and now when you are leaving this world you need to have the wealthy and lesser weight in this world but in the hereafter it become heavier on the scale of your hasanat. So you need to prepare yourself for that time when you are leaving. And that is the that is the hour. That is the hour as the ulama say that the hour of two types. The general hour that means the end of this world, the end of this life. And the individual hour. Each individual has an hour. When you die, that is your hour. No return. No returning back to this world. So that is the first step to the Akhirah. That is the first station of the Akhirah when you die. And there nothing will benefit you except what you did in this world. So, Allah Ta'ala, in the beginning,
beginning of Surah Al-Hajj is describing this, this day. And in many places in the Quran as we are going to go through now, Allah described some of what is going to happen there. إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ The earthquake which precedes the hour, as Allah Ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Zalzala, if you all remember, and you all remember, what Allah Ta'ala said there, إِذَا زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا Look at this. When the earth is shaked, when the earth is shaked, the shake that never ever happened, it happens only once at that time. Today, if there is an earthquake of five or six degrees, what will happen to the people? The whole world know about that. Because they consider it a type of crisis and calamity and destruction and problem. Maybe for a few kilometers. But guess what? When the whole earth is shaking, cracking, to limit that the man will say what happened to the earth. This never happened before. Yes, we, knew, we used to hear about uh, earthquake in Japan, a volcano in Iceland, a, a tsunami in Indonesia, but we never hear the whole earth is shaking now. Then Allah Ta'ala will let no one to answer this question but the earth itself will speak and say that your Lord have revealed it to it, to the earth, to do so. Commanded it to do so. So Allah Ta'ala is telling us that that shaking or earthquake of the hour that precedes the hour is something massive. You don't imagine it. If you want to imagine it, be in a place where the earth has a quake. There will be earthquake. Or ask anybody who had been in an earthquake and been survived. Ask him, what is the feeling? And multiply that by 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times, 10,000 times, 100 times, 1000 times, 1 million times, Allah knows best. It must be much greater than that number. Of the, of the most hard, most dangerous earthquake ever happened on the earth, multiplied by maybe a million times. To know the earthquake that go, or the shaking that going to exist before the hour. And then Allah Ta'ala said, Yawma tarawnaha, when you see that hour, that sign, when you see the hour, tadhalu kullu murda'atin amma arda'at. Every mother who is breast, breastfeeding her baby, we all know today, we all know, the most beloved person to the mother is what? Is a breastfed baby, isn't it? If a mother has two sons, one newly born and she's breastfeeding him, and one is five years old, who is she sticking to more? This baby. Who is she worried about more this baby. If anything goes wrong with this baby, she doesn't sleep. If this baby die, although she never had anything seen from this baby, it's still a baby in the process of breastfeeding. 
but she cries most. On that day, on the day of resurrection, this mother will throw her baby away. She doesn't want him now. Because, not because she doesn't love him, but because the mother is greater than that. Everyone is worried about himself. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّي وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِي وَبَنِيهِ يَوَدُّ الْمَرْءُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي يَوْمَئِذٍ مِنْ مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِبَنِيهِ وَأُمِّي وَأَبِيهِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ And that day, every one of us, I'm not telling you about people in other countries, but I'm telling you about you. Wallahi, you brother, going to run away from your mother. You're going to run away from your father. You're going to run away from your wife. You're going to run away from your son. You're going to run away from your daughter. Because, not because you don't like them. No, not because you were disobedient to them. No, but because the situation in that day, the mother in that day is greater than to be busy with anyone else because you want to be survived. And that's why in the other ayah, Allah Ta'ala said, يَوَدُّ الْمَرْءُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِئِذٍ بِبَنِيهِ On that day, every one of us would like to give a sacrifice of his survive with what is the sacrifice going to be given? Your mother, your father, your wife, your children. And then you may tell, you may say to the whole people, the whole creation, you all be destroyed. Let me go to Jannah and then I will intercede for you. <laughs> Look at that. The hour is not something easy, Ikhwan. And the hour is not something going to come to some of us and some not. We all are going to see the hour. What did we prepare for it? The Prophet ﷺ was asked, When is the hour? He did not answer. The man asked, When is the hour? The Prophet ﷺ did not answer. The man asked the third time, When is the hour? The Prophet ﷺ said, Then who is the, the, the one asking about the hour? The man said, I am Ya Rasulullah. He said, What did you prepare for it? It's not, the matter is not to know when, it's coming, no doubt, it's coming. Sooner or later, it's coming. And why Rasulullah did not tell him it is after 1,000 or 2,000 years? Because, can that man live for 2,000 years? Can he live 2,000 years? Then what is the benefit to tell him after 2,000 years? And as I said before, the hour is of two types. If he وسلم, told that man the hour of his, what about the hour of the next man, the next man, the whole human? There is an hour that exists in short terms. That is our death. That is the hour of every individual. Do you think when you die you're going to go to five-star hotel? No, you're going to be, whether you are buried in the uh, grave in the, on, in the air, or you are burnt, or whatsoever, you are in the hour. You are going to be questioned. You are going to be hit by the hammer if you don't answer. That is the hour. That is the hour. It is, as Allah Ta'ala said, when you see even the, uh, the woman who is pregnant, it will give birth. It will drop the pregnancy. The baby in her womb. Not because it is the time for giving birth. No. But because of the shock that she had. So it is something major. And on that day as Allah Ta'ala said, you see people. You see people. And you think that they are drunk because of the way that they walk and stand, like drunk people. You think that they are drunk 
but they are not drunk. And it's only that the punishment of Allah is severe. Yet, they haven't seen it. They did not see the punishment yet. But, when you are resurrected, you will come to know that everything said was right. Today, maybe, like the kuffar, they don't believe. Many Muslims, they have doubts. Not from Iman. On that day, these doubts become certain. Because it was, to, to, it was told to them that they are going to be rejected. They did not believe. Now they are seeing it. Not only them, but they are seeing Adam, the first man. All their fathers, all their descendants. They are going to see them there. So it is then certain to them. Then they become crazy. Then they become crazy. It is the hour which no one is going to be exempted from. Prophets are going to be resurrected. Pious people are going to be resurrected. The devil is going to be resurrected. The evil ones are going to be resurrected. Human going to be resurrected. Jinn going to be resurrected. Animals going to be resurrected. All. All of them going to be resurrected. It is what Allah Ta'ala called it Al-Haqqa Which means That Everything Was told to the people That it is going to exist And they used to have doubt Like the resurrection Become true Haqq They see it That's why it is called Haqqa And it is a Sakha which makes people deaf because of the blown on the horn when angel Israfil is commanded and he is only he's created to do only two blows two time blowing one for everybody to die and one for everybody to be resurrected to come to arise one for every living to die and the other for every death to arise it is al qari'ah the striker that strikes the hearts it doesn't strike the body it strikes the heart You know how the heart is striked? Have you ever been uh, threatened? Have you ever been in a yani, uh, driving and you saw a big lorry coming towards you? Tried to escape, you couldn't, and then at the, at, at the end, Allah Ta'ala protected you. How is your heart doing then? How is it beating? That is nothing compared to what you're going to see on the day of resurrection. In fact, that is nothing to, going to be uh, compared to what you are going to see in the process of dying. As Allah Ta'ala said. As Allah Ta'ala said in two places in the Quran. In Surah Al-Waqi'ah and in Surah Al-Qiyamah. Allah Ta'ala described the process of death are there which is the first station the first step the first stage of the akhirah of the hour that he sees everything unseen seen to him and there he gets scared it is al waqa which is going to exist no doubt it is Yawmul Ba'ath, the day of resurrection, which every mankind will uh, be arise for the Lord of Universes. It is Yawmul Nushur. It is, when the, uh, it is the day in which every death is going to be uh, arised from 
the grave the way plants uh, grow. It is the day in which the earth is going to be replaced by other earth. And the heavens is going to be replaced by other heavens. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضُ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ It is the day in which the heavens are going to be worn like or folded like piece of record. It is the day in which the heavens are going to be cracked and the mountain going to be turned and flying like pieces of cotton. It is when you see people resurrected and covering the surface of the earth like in the autumn the butterfly cover the surface of the earth it is the day in which they are all going to be brought out it is the day in which they are all going to be yansilun yansilun means they are going to be brought out it is the day in which all mankind going to return to Allah all everybody no exemption everybody is going to be returned back to Allah for what for what for the judgment ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت on that day every soul will be given or will be uh, rewarded based on what it earned it is the day in which as Allah Ta'ala said تجد كل نفس كل نفس ما عملت من خير محضرة وما عملت من سوء تود لو أن بينها وبينه أمدا بعيدا it is the day in which every soul going to see all that good deeds that it did brought for it so happiness will come but at the same time every evil that this soul this person did will be brought to it in a book that never missed any and then that soul would wish that there will be a long distance between that book and it but it's not going to be far away from you as Allah Ta'ala said وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ نُخْرِجُ لَهُ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْشُورًا اقرأ كتابك كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حَسِيبًا Every man can we gave him his choice we told him the way of haq and way of batil truth and false and on the day of resurrection we're going to bring him his book and it is going to be said to him read your book today it is sufficient that you be the judge of yourself on that day your tongue is not going to speak but your hands your ties and your skin the ear everything else going to to witness either for you or against you it is the day in which only the believers their belief going to benefit them the honest ones their honesty going to benefit them but the layers are not it is the day in which in which the eyes are not going to blink the eyes will be wide widely opened widely opened like when you are scared of something because of the scary things that are going to exist on that day on that day that is a day in which there is no sacrifice to be 
paid or accepted. In that day, there is no excuses going to be accepted. No excuses. Sorry, oh Allah. No sorries at that day. Either this or that. Either Jannah or fire. Of course, anything below shirk is for Allah to punish for or to forgive. But no one knows that his sin is going to be forgiven or not. So that's why you need to work for earning the forgiveness of Allah from now. Don't delay it to that day. Don't say, oh, as a believer, my sin is going to be forgiven. How you know? How you know? On that day, that is the day in which the oppressor is going to bite on his hand. You know why? Today, if you lose something very valuable to you, what do you do? Why I did this? Why did I do this? How did I lose it? On that day, wallahi, those oppressors. Number one, the kafir, the mushrik, is oppressor. The mubtadi is oppressor. The one who uh, uh, oppressed the others is oppressor. The one who commits sin is oppressor to himself. This all going to bite on their hands. It is the day on which Allah Ta'ala is going to bring amongst every nation a witness. A witness. As Allah Ta'ala said. يَوْمَ يَبْعَثُ مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ شَهِيدًا ثُمَّ لَا يُؤْذَنُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَلَا هُمْ يُسْتَعْتَبُونَ That will be a witness. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاؤُنَاءِ شَهِيدًا On that day, from amongst every nation, there will be a witness. That is the messenger sent to them. And after all, there will be a witness for all those witnesses that they did their duty, their role. That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the witness for all. On that day, on that day, the day of resurrection, it will be said to those who committed shirk, call those who worship aside with Allah, besides Allah. And you claim that they deserved this worship. And they, those worshippers, will call those ones who they used to worship. But they will, not, they will never respond to their calls. They will never respond to their calls, Ikhwan. On that day, that is the day in which no wealth, no children will benefit no one except whom he who comes with a very pure believer, honest heart. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ It is the day in which some faces will turn white while others will turn black. It's not black and white as the colors you know because we know that Bilal was black but he will be in a very white face on the day of resurrection. And Abu Lahab Abu Lahab was only called Abu Lahab because of the whiteness on his face. His face has reddish color because he was very white. That's why they call him Abu Lahab. From the Jahiliya time, they used to call him Abu Lahab. Lahab means flame. Like he has reddish color, they say that flame on his face. That white face will turn black. Whiteness and Blackness here is based on your deeds. On your deeds. The whiteness of honor and the blackness of yani the whiteness of, uh, of, uh, of honor and dignity and the blackness of 
shame and humility. So, as Ibn Abbas said, those of white faces are the people of Sunnah. And those of, of black faces are people of Bid'ah. You need to work out. Now, don't say that, oh, I have white skin. I'm going to be from those ones. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. There are many black skinned people going to be white faces on the devil's action. While many white skinned people going to turn be, to be turned to black faces on the devil's action. And it's based on what you do today. That is the hour, ya khwan. That is the hour. Look at it in the Quran. The Quran has described as Allah Ta'ala said, the baby, the baby head will turn gray because of the crisis going, which are going to exist on that day. So fear Allah, slaves of Allah, and prepare yourself for that day. And prepare, as they say, prepare an answer for the question and prepare a successfulness for that answer it's not only to answer it's not the matter that to answer the questions everyone will have to answer you cannot keep quiet you will have to answer but it is not any answer accepted it's not any answers it's not any answer going to be accepted Allah will ask you why did you worship me this way you say oh I saw people doing it's not accepted it's not accepted oh Allah I did my best and Allah knows Allah knows if you really did your best or you just saying something and if you really did your best to come to know the truth but this is what you come up with you would be burdened other than that, you will be punished. And the punishment on that day, don't ask what it is. Let me just tell you and bring you one image of the punishment. The lowest punishment. One day, Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu asked him, asked Rasulullah sallallahu ماذا what did you do for your descendant, your uh, your uh, dead uncle, Abu Talib? Because Abu Talib supported Muhammad Sallallahu a lot, but he died on kufr. He died on kufr. Then Rasulullah responded, saying, Allah Taala has reduced the punishment of his by because of me because of me meaning not because of me because he's relative La, Abu Lahab is relative his uncle also and his father as he said to the Sahabi who came and asked Rasulullah where is my father he said your father is in the fire because his father died in the Jahiliyyah times so the man went sad he called him. He said, come, come. My father and your father in the fire. It's not only your father, but even the Prophet's father. Why? Because the Prophet's father died on Kufr in the Jahiliyyah. So it is not because of the uh, kinship relation Abu Talib was yani, uh, or, or will receive the lowest punishment in the fire. La. It is because it's support to Rasulullah But he is in the fire because he died on kufr. So he said to him, Allah reduced his punishment and he is the lowest is receiving the lowest punishment in the fire. He is he is uh, in a, a dahdah. Dahdah is when you come to the coast, 
to the beach and you get you walk into the water and the water goes to your uh, to your ankles that level called the hadah that is the lowest of punishment in the fire he is in two slippers that his brain is burning is boiling because of the heat of these slivers of fire that is the lowest don't say let me do it alhamdulillah yani i'm muslim Akhi, you don't know how to end up as he saw salam said to aisha one time and to the whole ummah in another time iyaki and when he spoke to aisha he said iyaki wa muhaqqirat al dhunub and when he spoke to the sahaba he said iyakum means even us wa muhaqqirat al dhunub fa innahunna majtama'na ala mri'in illa ahlaknahu be careful of the minor sins don't say it's a minor sin be careful of the minor sins as whenever they accumulate they destroy the one the person they destroy the person who, commit, who commits them so you have to be careful whenever you commit a sin you for, seek forgiveness even when you don't for, see when you don't when you don't uh, commit sin you need to seek forgiveness as Rasulullah said, because you won't worship Allah the way it should be. That's why you seek forgiveness for the uh, shortcomings of yours. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek forgiveness 100 times a day. 100 times a day. Who can tell me what are the sins that Rasulullah committed? Even even let's say he committed a sin. Didn't Allah Ta'ala say in Surah Al-Fatih, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ Look at that. But Rasulullah continued seeking forgiveness. And he taught us, he said, seek forgiveness as I seek forgiveness in each day 100 times. He called us and he commanded us to seek forgiveness. And when you enter the toilet and you exit it, you come out of it, you say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Forgive you of what? Of the time spent in the toilet where you cannot do remembrance of Allah. Is it a mistake? No, it's not a mistake. It's a necessity to go to the toilet. And you are told in the toilet, don't mention the name of Allah don't yani, don't do any dhikr there so when you come out <coughs> you say oh Allah forgive me I was in a place where I could not yani, remember you now you are outside where is the remembrance of Allah are you all the time in the toilet where is the remembrance of Allah where is it The situation of people today is like a man sitting in the toilet all of his life. He cannot do any remembrance. And that's why they don't do any remembrance. Very rarely. Rasulullah seek forgiveness 100 times a day. And we, I don't want to ask you how many sins we commit. Because I'm sure not, that no one of you can count. I'm sure. No one of you can count. We commit sins like breathing. Like breathing. And how many times you seek forgiveness? Abu Huraira, it was said that he used to seek forgiveness each day 12,000 times. 12,000 times. As in the biography of Abu Huraira. Why? When Abu Huraira was dying, he was found crying. He was told, Abu Huraira, you cry. You accompany Rasulullah, you delivered most of the hadith, you cry. He said, yes, I cry for a long, hot day in the summer that I'm not going to fast. And for a long, cold night in the winter that I'm not going to stand for prayer because he's going to die. 
Look at those people. So, and also, not only in the times where you did not mention, did not remember Allah because of the situation you are in, like in the toilet, but once you finish the obligatory prayers, what you say? What did Rasulullah teach us to say? Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. What for? Did you commit a sin now? Or you worshipped Allah? You worshipped Allah, but why you say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah? Because this prayer has many mistakes and violations. That's why you say, oh Allah, forgive me for anything wrong that I made in the salah. So now, when you don't remember Allah, you, say, you seek forgiveness. When you worship Allah, you seek forgiveness. And now, when you commit sins, you don't seek forgiveness. What a strange creature you are. When you seek the, the sins, you don't. When you commit sins, you don't seek forgiveness. But when you were in a situation that is beyond your ability, you are in the toilet, you are told don't do any, ty any, any type of remembrance in that place. When you came out, you say, Ghufranak. Good. Why? Because I couldn't remember Allah. Good. Now, and the rest of the times, you are not in the toilet. Did you remember Allah? No. Did you see... Oh Allah forgive me that I did not remember you. No. Subhanallah. When the times you are yani, it was forbidden for you to mention Allah, remember Allah, you ask for forgiveness. Oh sorry, oh Allah, I did not remember you because I was in a place which is not good. And you come out of that place. You are in the dining room, you are in the uh, living room, you are in the bedroom, you are in the office, you are in the street, you are in your car, you don't mention Allah. Did you seek forgiveness because you did not mention, uh, remember Allah? No. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. What type of understanding we have? What type of understanding we have? Where is the preparation? Aren't we like machines just doing without understanding, without focusing? It become habit. The worship become habit only. No soul. No soul in this worship. It becomes something that, you know, it is habit and nothing else. When you worship after the prayers, which pleases Allah, you seek forgiveness. When you committed the sin, you did not seek forgiveness. Subhanallah. Do you guys think the shaitan has hard time these days? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. The shaitan does not have hard time these days. Because people are corrupted anyway. Are corrupted anyway. Shaitan used to have hard time during the time of Rasulullah and the Sahaba. Yes, because they were believers. I told you we were in a seek forgiveness 12 times a day. And see what Abu Bakr did, what Umar did, what Ibn Umar did, what this, what that, what all the Sahaba did. Show me who is doing like them today. Oh, they are the Sahaba. So what? Aren't they human? Like us? Can't we do like them? Did we ask Allah? Are we serious? When we ask Allah? Or it is only, you know, Excuses that the shaitan giving us and poisoning our brains and hearts and iman with. If the shaitan need to put a trap during the sahaba time to hunt one sahabi and he may need to put thousand traps and million traps and he fail. Today he doesn't need. Even the hook he doesn't need. He just threw the threat and he can catch any one of us. Why? Because we are not preparing for the hour 
we go we go through the ayat like you know like it any, anything like anything wallahi if we understand it properly if we have the iman properly wallahi surah al-fatiha you cannot pass it you cannot recite uh, yani it all without crying maliki yawmuddin do you understand what is yawmuddin do you know what is yawmuddin The Prophet Sallallahu said one day to the Sahaba لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ If you know what I know لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا You will only laugh four little times وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا And you will cry a lot وَلَخَرَجْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّعُدَاتِ And you all will go to the desert What for? تَجْأَرُونَ Raising your voices and your hands. Oh, our Lord, forgive us. Oh, our Lord, forgive us. But the thing is that we are so headless of the Akhirah. So headless of the Akhirah. And excuse me, and I need you guys to answer me, please. Who of you visit the graves? And how often? Wallahi, I asked this question, even in Saudi, I had the same answer. It's not because you guys want to hide your iman and you don't want to show off, but because the reality is, none visit the graves. Unless if a relative dies, passes away, so you go with the janazah, that's it. That's it. And maybe many of you do not know the exact location of the cemetery in here in in Halifax because we don't go while Rasulullah commanded us told us and commanded us visit the graves as they remind you the Akhra what does that mean they rem when you go there and you see the graves and your father and your friend and your brother and all those people who used to see now they are there you remember that I am going to be there one day let me do good now they can't do, do, do good let me do good now. That's the meaning of it reminds you the Akhirah. But we don't get ready for that day. أَسْأَلُ اللَّهِ بِمَنِّي وَكَرَمِهِ أَنْ يَرْزُقَنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ حُسْنَ الْإِسْتِمَاعِ وَحُسْنَ الْقَوْلِ وَحُسْنَ الْعَمَلِ And I ask Allah Ta'ala to make us from those who fear Him seriously, sincerely, and the way should be, may Allah Ta'ala forgive our sins and increase our iman and use us in what He in what pleases Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and lead us to the way of the highest ranks of the Jannah and protect us from all the ways of the shaitan and the fire. Us, our families, children, parents, neighbors, and all those. Muslims who we know, may Allah Ta'ala guide them all to the Tawheed, to the oneness of His, to the Sunnah of His Prophet Sallallahu to the Quran, and may Allah Ta'ala even guide all those kuffar to what pleases Him. Wallahu a'lam, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Okay, we have the first question here to the Shaykh says that I go to the Muslim grave and I see flowers on them. Is there any good in that? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu said one day to one of his companions called Abu Tayyah should I not send you with what Rasulullah sent me? He said, Yes, O uh, Ali, send me with that. He said that Rasulullah sent me to uh, not to leave any erected, any raised grave except that to level it to the ground and to uh, and to destroy 
every uh, image of creation with soul, you know, like birds or any picture. But we don't mean by that picture by picture, but mean any image, like uh, the uh, idols or statues or what, whatever. So Ali radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet ﷺ told him to level the graves to the ground. Why? So that it is not yani, going to be worshipped one day. Maybe not this particular grave, maybe not this particular person, but some others. Putting the flowers, what for? They say Rasulullah sallallahu one day passed by two graves. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa got a branch of a palm tree, broke it into two pieces, planted one on this grave and the other on that grave. First of all, he did not put flowers. So, what, what, what they put is different from what he put. And they put flowers because I've been to some cemeteries here where you see one side graves of the kuffar and the other side graves of Muslims. And you see the grave of the kuffar, the graves of the kuffar have flowers, have some you know, toys or like that, statues and um, you know, like that. The Muslims started imitating and doing like them. Name labels and you know, just imitating the kuffar. And and last March I was here in Manchester and we went to a cemetery, and I saw more flowers on the graves of Muslims than the graves of the kuffar. That is one thing. So what Rasulullah put on the graves on those two graves is different from what they are putting. The second, Rasulullah did not put these pieces of the branch of the palm tree on the graves of every person died. But he put them on these two particular graves. And he said that these people are being punished and, and they are not punished for something uh, simple. One of them was backbiting and slandering people, and the other was uh, was not uh, cleaning and protecting from reflection of urine whenever he urinates, meaning he does not clean himself. So now, the question to these people: Why do you put the flowers? If they say. As the Prophet ﷺ said that the punishment will stop as, as uh, yani, and he said as long as these two pieces of the branch of the branch of the palm tree are still fresh. When they dry, the punishment will resume. So we asked them, Do you now want to say that your father is someone who never used to clean from urine or what? Do you want to say that? Do you want to tell people that, look, this is the grave of my father, and I am putting this because he was not uh, upon cleanness? Or do you want to say that, oh, my father was so bad, he was backbiting? Do you want to say that? So why are you doing, why are you putting these flowers? Or you want to say that, oh, the kuffar are putting it, and yani, we must show that we love our people more than them. So then this is the imitating that Rasulullah told us that you will follow the people of the scripture step by step even if they enter into a hall of a desert lizard where you will enter. So you are now fulfilling what Rasulullah was warning us and he told us that there will be Muslims who are going to imitate the kuffar and follow them. So you are you want to say that, yes, you are one of those who 
enmity the kuffar. And we say, Akhi, this is, first of all, there's no proof for them to do that. Second, it is an imitating of the kuffar, which is haram. But do like what Ali radiallahu anhu said. Ever saw a sallam said to Ali, don't let, don't leave any grave, yani, uh, highly raised above the ground, except that you make it level to the ground. Why? So it is not to be, uh, yani, uh, um, it is not to be, uh, yani, made, better than the others or uh, more noticeable than the others make them equal but you want your father's grave or whoever grave to be special and that's wrong that's wrong yakhwan. that is not from islam that is not from the sunnah wallahu a'lam the next question is on the day of judgment Everything will die, but will the angels also die? If yes, how will angel Israfil be able to blow the trumpet the second time? Now, everything will die. Yes, everyone will die. Everyone will die. And as Allah Taala said, that He will say, "Liman al mulk al yom," as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that. On that day, Allah Ta'ala, after everyone dies, he will, uh, Allah Ta'ala will say, Liman al mulk al to whom they dominion today. Who is the king today? <clears throat> and no one will answer, and he, Allah Ta'ala, will say, Lillah, for Allah, the only one. <coughs> and the other part of the question, how... Uh, Angel Israfil will blow the second will say Akhi, Allah Ta'ala told us in the Quran that he was rocked and he give life and death as he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants as you know the story of Ibrahim السلام, when he said to Allah oh my Lord show me how you uh, arise the death And Allah Ta'ala commanded him to take four different type of birds, cut them pieces, mix them, and take a bunch of, uh, yani, pick, uh, yani, grab some of the flesh of, yani, of the mixed, and put this on each, yani, each, each, each handful on a, a mountain. And then go back to where you were and call them. They will all come each one as was before you kill it. So, Allah Ta'ala cannot be asked how you do it. Allah does whatever He wants. And when, our, when we are told that this will happen, we have to accept it. And it would not increase our iman or decrease it to know how Allah will uh, yani make Israfil to uh, come to life and blow. Or whether Israfil will die or not. First, you have to believe that it is not something difficult for Allah to do. There is nothing difficult for Allah to do. Second, you have to know that this type of question does not increase your iman or decreases it. Yani if you are told it, uh, yani life would be given in this way or this process, this will increase your iman, then your iman is not that. We are told, we believe. Wallahu a'ala. Next question is, As-salamu alaykum, Shaykh, can you please explain the sunnah way of visiting the graveyards and what to recite at the graveyard? As some people read Surah Fatiha three times, Surah Ikhlas three times in the graveyard. Is this sunnah? If not, what, what should you read? No, it is not from the sunnah to read three times nor one time. That is bid'ah. And when we say sunnah, sunnah of whom you want to say? Sunnah of Muhammad, isn't it? If it is sunnah of Muhammad, we say 
Did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to visit the graves or not? He used to. Did any Sahaba report that he used to recite Fatiha or Ayatul Kursi or Qulu Allahu Ahad or Yasin or whatsoever? No one reported that. But Aisha reported that he, he visited the graveyard of Baqiya and she asked him, what should I say when I visit the graves? He said to her, you say, Assalamu alaikum, ya ahl al-diyar, min al-mu'mineen wal-muslimin, yarhamullah al-mustaqdimina minna wal-mustaqirin, antum as-sabiqun wa nahnu al-athar. So you give salam, that's a small thing. You don't need to make it long and just that. Assalamu alaikum. If you don't know it in Arabic, you just say it in English or in your own language. Assalamu alaikum. Everyone knows to say assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, all people buried in these graves. May Allah bestow mercy on you. You are, uh, you are, you, you preceded us and we are on the way to your places. May Allah forgive the first ones and the last ones of all of us. Easy. But people make it complicated. They want to go there, recite Surah Al-Fatiha for the soul of so and so. Who told you that it will benefit him? If it would, why Rasulullah didn't teach us? Do you think that you know more than him? I'm wondering, yani, I'm wondering. Allah Question to the front, please. Um, okay, the question is, um, when the people rise from the dead on the Day of Judgment, will their bodies be just bones or will there be flesh on their bones? No, they would be, they would be like they are today. Like they are today. <coughs> yani, the bones and flesh, and like they are today. Those who have died with their beards, uh, on, they will come with their beards on, those who shaved it, Allah knows best. Yeah, but everyone will come as he was. It's not only the bones. Now, as Allah Ta'ala said, as the punishment in the gray, in the, in the, in the, in the fire, كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْ لَهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَ لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Every time their skins burn, we replace their skins with new skin, so they test the fire, the, the punishment. So, skins is mentioned there. No. Next question is, can I go to the bathroom wearing a taweez on my neck? First of all, are you allowed to wear taweez? You are not allowed. This is bid'ah, to wear taweez. And taweez of two types. Whether taweez, that is Quran, ayat, and like that. Quran, which is something, uh, uh, يعني, something, um, from the religion, from the revelation, but it is misused. Quran is not to be written and rolled up and hung on the tie, uh, sorry, on, on the neck or on uh, the hand, or, but Quran is to be recited, recited. If you are suffering of anything, uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us, اقرأوا القرآن فإن أخذه بركة اقرأوا سورة البقرة فإن أخذه بركة وَتَرْكَا حَسْرَةً وَلَا تَسْتَطِيعُ الْبَطَرَةً Read Surah Al-Baqarah as memorizing it is barakah, is blessing. And leaving it is a, 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 a blameworthiness. And the magicians cannot harm one who memorizes Surah Al-Baqarah. It's not, it's not to hang it but to memorize it and read it. That's the... The Prophet ﷺ said, الْبَيْتُ الَّذِي تُقْرَى فِي سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ لَا يَقْرَبُ الشَّيْطَانِ The house in which Surah Al-Baqarah is recited, not hung. Many people today hang idol, kursi hang. This is all bid'ah. This is not true. This is not correct. But you need to recite Surah Al-Baqarah in your house to chase out the shayateen from your house. And, uh, but anyway, it is not allowed to wear ta'weed and not allowed to take it into the toilet with it. Next question. Um, 
Next question is, uh, when you mentioned the Day of Judgment, what exactly does that mean? Because everyone is going to die at different times. So should we consider the time we die, that will be the Day of Judgment for us? Or will first everyone die, meaning all the humans die, and then after that there will be a particular time where all of us together will face the Day of Judgment? I think uh, the brother who wrote this question came just uh, late. Otherwise I've mentioned, for, and I repeated it from the beginning, I said that the Qiyamah, the Sa'a, the hour, is of two types, general and individual, specific and general. The general is that, and I mentioned the hadith of Rasulullah when the man asked about where, when is the hour, and he, and he told him, what did you prepare for it? And I said, if Rasulullah told him after 2,000 years, what benefits him? Is he going to live 2,000 years? No. If Rasulullah told him, your hour is going on to be on this day, then what about the rest of the people? Everyone going to be told, and Rasulullah himself does not know. He himself does not know. Neither the major Qiyamah, nor the specific Qiyamah of everyone. But, as I said that, once you die, that is the Qiyamah of yours. And we said that death is the first step to the, uh, of the Akhirah, first stage, the first stage of the akhra. No. Uh, next question is, can women go to the graveyard? This is a matter of conflict between the scholars. Scholars have different opinions that, on that. But what the opinion that I myself take is the opinion that says it is permissible. Because Aisha asked the Prophet uh, what should I say when I visit the grave? He did not tell her, no, don't visit the grave. The different opinions of the scholars came from two ahadith. One says, La'an Allah za'irat, and the other said, La'an Allah zawarat al-qubur. Some of the ulama of hadith say that the hadith of La'an Allah za'irat is weak. And the hadith says, La'an Allah zawarat is authentic. And the difference between za'irat and zawarat Za'irat, uh, those who visit time to time. Sorry, I said Za'irat is weak. No, it is the opposite. Za'irat is authentic and Zawarat is weak. The difference is Zawarat means regular. Every day, every week they go. That is not allowed. But Za'irat, yani, time to time they go, it's allowed. That's one opinion. Other opinions say no, women should not go at all. Because they are very weak and they may do uh, things which are not allowed. But we still have men who are weak. We still have men who are m more weak than women. If they, if they see the grave, they, they get shocked and cry. And if they see a janaza, if they see uh, an injured person, if they see a drop of blood, they may cry. But it, yani, the, the general uh, ruling on that is that it is permissible. If we have women who may do something which is not correct in the grave, this woman should be stopped. Like, women are allowed to come to the masajid for prayer. But if we know a, a particular, if your daughter or your wife wants to go Yani on uh, in the jeans and with makeup with perfume and she doesn't wear the hijab she doesn't you have to stop her you don't say oh Rasulullah said do not stop women when they go to masajid but when they go masajid with the conditions but if they break the conditions no they are not uh, allowed same thing when they go to the graveyard they similar to visit if they go on the yani, conditions made, yani, calm and just give salam and go without yelling, without you know, uh, hitting their cheeks, without you know, saying anything wrong, then you, they are allowed. But if they do so, no, we don't allow them. Not because it is not allowed, but because there is a munkar now. And munkar must be stopped. Wallahu a'lam. إن شاء الله والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد على آله وصحبه